that time, which I would also include in the hyperdimensional navigation session, you're trying to overcome narrow-mindedness. How do you do that? You explore primary consciousness utilizing your heart sense. You check in with your soul and your spirit. You prepare to transcend the mind through spiritual practice. So you prepare through spiritual practice. Now when you do transcend the mind, you're ready. You're more ready. We hear that all the time from people who have, have experienced uh, meditation and things like that. Keep it simple. You know, focus on love, forgiveness, compassion, gratitude. You know, faculties of the spirit, faculties of the heart. That's what's going to get you through you know, what might be a, a nightmare. Open your mind. You know, if your mind starts closing in and telling you there's no way out, you're screwed, this is the bad trip, you're never going to get out of here. You know, open your mind. The curiosity. You know, that's what the shamans teach. Be curious. You know, look, there's one little piece of you, one thread that can still see something. Look for something. There might be, oh, there's a little something there. Go with that. Creativity. You know, imagine something. Be creative. Okay, there's nothing here. What am I going to do? I've got to come up with something. I'm not just going to be stuck in this trap. Seek the guidance of experienced masters. Reach for spiritual guidance, you know, through faith. So that's another opportunity for those people who want to go that far with it. You know, when you're out there, Talk to the spirits, you know, find the good spirit to guide you, you know, pray to God if that's what you believe. Beware of the risks and prepare appropriately. Recognize the crucial importance of integration to secondary consciousness and the ego-driven culture, you know. You go down to Peru, you're in the whole thing, it's great, you come back and it's a, it's a real big shift. All right, thank you, that's the talk. Thank you. I guess we have a question, a few questions. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's get to it. Well, it's a brilliant paper, you know, really, and I'm just a stowaway. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> but it's these guys. You have to hand it to these guys, you know. They're really uh, pretty bold, you know, and they're, they're just so smart that they can get away with saying things, you know. <laughs> that it's like they, they have some proof that other people they have to shy away from in their, in their kind of amateur attempts Wait, where um, I think he's based in England he's, uh, I don't know where exactly Robin is in uh, Imperial College London and David Nutt got kicked out of there because he's very comfortable oh uh, yeah okay they accepted him at Cardiff Amanda Feeling is, a, is a one of the is a part of the extended royal family is my understanding the Beckley Foundation, yeah. These are guys that are, you know, the Beckley Foundation, like there's MAPS, and then there's the Beckley Foundation, and the Hefter Institute. The, yeah. And she's, a, she's a, you know, they're really, exactly. You need that. All right, go ahead. So does any of this have anything to do with being in the flow? Can I say yes. I mean, I, I say that's, where is it? So the flow is like, you know, one example, I don't know if this is just a theory, but you know, this idea, they're saying that, you know, your mind and stuff is keeping you kind of like in this more control to be able to get along and all this stuff. But when you go more open-minded consciousness, which they're saying is more entropic, more similar to the, what nature's doing, and like just more free, and then you're in the flow more, you know. Mm -hmm. In other words, the mind gets out of the way, and then now you're the way that what seems like a chaotic, you know, their first thought is, oh, my God, don't go there. You're going to get paranoid. You're going to get who knows what's going to happen. All these crazy ideas are going to come up. But then it's like, well, what if you come into the flow there? And that's what I'm saying. In the higher self, you can come into the flow, and you can be, you know, very comfortable in such a place. I, uh, I heard your talk on um, Amber Lyons' podcast. Oh, thank you. So yeah. Really enjoyed that. So I have a question about um, the default mode, net, no, default mode network. Yeah. Is, I've thought of that as like... Um, is it the same as like a massive like filtering mechanism? Is there a difference? Between I think it, it's related to that. That's how I think about it. Like I'm thinking about like, because, you know, there's this, because uh, you, you see all the sensory inputs going through it, it seems like, you know. So it seems like a filter. And then you talk about like subliminal and liminal. In other words, like your mind's just even your vision, you know, you're constantly like, filling in all these gaps. So it's like, where do you fill in the gaps and what story are you, how are you adjusting what you're seeing, you know? And so it does seem that it is kind of like the filter. And so ideally, like, you know, I think in like the shamanic like tradition is you want like the energy to flow from your heart, like through your mind. So ideally the filter would be like a crystalline structure that would just be, you know, in the flow. But, you know, if it's not, then yeah, you're going to be blocked all these different ways. So I think it's kind of like that. That's how I think about it, too. But there's nobody, 